Mary owes her interest in Gaelic to her father, and it was he who started her eldest son, Duncan, on the pipes two years ago. His tutor now is Mr Simpson, who teaches schools in the central region. He's playing as Collins Cattle, and very expertly too. Since the time of the mysterious people who built the stone circles and their successors who brought the craft of working in iron, man has been changing the landscape. The mighty Bredalbin family had all of Loch Tay to do what they liked with until death duties and financial decline forced them to sell off their Taymouth castle and 500,000 square acre estate. Under a new owner at Remini, Duncan Miller, the village of Acharn has prospered exceedingly with mechanical engineering as well as farming. How many people live here today? It's a community of about 140, 50 souls and it has very, very diverse interests. There is estate interest, there is farm interest, we have some forestry. There is an engineering workshop that sends timber master winches all over the world. One went to uh, Hungary last week, one went to British Honduras, one's going to the Southern Ireland in a few days. So we have that economy. We've got local authority houses, local authority people living in them, working for roads and other, other interests, and some people working in Aberfeldy. So we have a huge variety of interests in this little community. And in your particular estate, 7,000 acres, what kind of territory is that? It's mostly moorland. Uh, high moorland over a thousand feet and that accounts for six and a bit of the seven thousand and on that high moorland we farm the sheep and I farm the deer just as carefully as I farm the sheep. For sport? Uh, for sport and yield of, of, of venison but basically for sport and we also have some pheasants and we've started to let the pheasant shooting as another side of the sporting activity from which we gain an interest and which the community, by providing beaters and so on, also have a share. I'm very happy with tourism, provided it's kept in the right scale. Uh, my whole theory of a community is that they ought to have different and diverse interests and not all the one. So I try and fit tourism into the economy of the community we have here in a proper and decent scale. And here, in, in the, the holiday interest that we are creating with the Loch Tay Lodges, we've got this water resource which is available for our people who live here. They can go out on the loch, there's a, a yacht moored out there, and they can sail. But as far as I'm concerned, this bay has no powerboats, it's sailing only. And what about this old pier right beside you? Well, I landed at that pier about 1919. And I landed off the old Sibylla, a coal-fired steamer which used to tow the barges which served the community all round the loch. So you've seen a queen of changes in your time? A lot of changes. But one change that I do appreciate is that this community, uh, I think largely because of our intention to diversify the interests, this community is healthy and it is growing and there are more people and there are more children and there are more houses than there have been for the last 30 or 40 years. And new tourist developments too. Special facilities for owners of sailing boats, a fine building of historic and architectural interest has been altered inside to make six self-catering chalets. And just along the road from here, near Kenmore, is the Loch Tay Leisure Centre with self-catering chalets and restaurants opened in 1982. The position of Loch Tay in the Central Highlands makes it an ideal touring centre. I'd say of Loch Tay as a whole, from Colin to Ken Moor, along the 15 miles of each shore, that a lovely balance has been held between tourism and the traditional ways of earning a living from the countryside. My impression is of happiness in a country that's probably being enjoyed by more people than at any time in its history.